Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley. Today we'll be doing a deep dive of Sense and Sensibility, discussing whether this novel deserves the quote unquote title, the deserving term of a classic. Now, if you're not familiar with the story of Sense and Sensibility, this story follows two sisters who, after the death of their father, are forced to move out of the house that they've been living in. They have to move to a new neighborhood. Their fortune is no longer as prestigious as it was. They don't have the income that they did before, and they are now trying to find suitable husbands so that they can continue to live. And they're now dealing with nosy neighbors, not enough money, um, boys who have questionable motives. Um, it's a beautiful story, and I definitely think it deserves the title of a classic. I do want to add the caveat that I think that there are some books that can be considered classics for some people and for other people cannot be considered classics and I think Sense of Sensibility probably falls more into those lines. This book definitely is a classic in my mind but I can understand that if the themes and undertones of the novel um, are not as impactful to you that you might not consider this novel a classic. So why should you bother reading Sense and Sensibility? Well, this is a novel that is a study between sense, or in our modern terms what we would call logic, and sensibility, which we would call emotion. So this is a battle of logic versus emotion. Our two main characters both fall into, or they fall into one camp. So we have Eleanor, the elder sister, who is very logical, very methodical in her reasoning, and then we have Marianne, who is very emotional and very passionate about the things that go on in her life. Eleanor holds all of the emotion deep inside of herself, she doesn't share that emotion, and she uses a lot of logic to reason through problems and to reason her emotions away. Versus Marianne, who likes to chase rainbows as she runs down hills and consider butterflies and cry passionately about things that make her upset and read poetry very deeply. These two characters allow us to watch how emotion and logic kind of play out on the extreme edges and how they need to come together and work together and we need both of them in our lives. At first glance, this novel might seem like it's condemning sensibility or that unchecked passionate emotion. After all, the main character, <laughs> Marianne, spends a great, deal, a great deal of time suffering over her emotions. She bemoans her first lost love to the point that she can't eat, uh, she can't focus, she can't do anything but cry and weep over him and everything reminds her of him. She doesn't take care of herself so much so that when she walks through a storm she becomes very ill and almost dies because of the lack of self-care that she's given to her own body. She also gets a great deal of scorn from her neighbors and from the surrounding people because of her um, inability to just take things in and during polite society she very much sets boundaries and tells people what she thinks of them and if she doesn't like people she doesn't hang out with them. But on closer inspection I don't think this novel is a condemnation of emotion. Eleanor also spends a great deal of time suffering but because that suffering is more internal it makes it harder to see if you're not reading closely and carefully. Eleanor spends a great deal of time in quiet agony because she doesn't feel comfortable expressing and sharing her emotions with people. She has quite a toxic relationship with Lucy Steele, who pulls her aside and forces her to listen to escapades about her ex-boyfriend, whom Eleanor no longer has the ability to woo. She can't express to her in-laws that she can't marry their son because he's already engaged to someone else, and she spends a great deal of time being put down on and being insulted by her sister-in-law and their family. And to some extent, she gets taken advantage of by her mother, by Mrs. Jennings, by Fanny, by Edward and Lucy. Steel. It's not really a happy life. I think one of the main differences is that Eleanor is not as vocal as Marianne. I think Eleanor does have almost as much suffering as Marianne does, but because she's not vocal about it, it's easy for us as the reader to kind of ignore it or to sidestep it or to not even realize that there is a great deal of suffering going on. I certainly miss that on the couple reads that I've done of Sense and Sensibility. This is the third time that I've read the novel, and I noticed because I myself am more like Eleanor and I tend to hide my emotions and pull them in, um, it makes it really easy for me to not realize that, oh, Eleanor is in a great deal of pain simply because that's the way I handle emotions as well. But I don't think Jane Austen is arguing here that not having emotions is the better consequence. Both Eleanor and Marianne have a lot of growing up that they have to do in this novel. Both sisters have to learn that their primary way of dealing with emotions is not healthy and they have to pull back from that and find a more balanced and moderate way of dealing with their emotions. Eleanor becomes less guarded and Marianne becomes more careful. It raises questions about whether logic or emotionality or emotions are better or if either is better and what is a good mode of moderation between those two counterbalances in us as humans. 
Without a logic check from Eleanor, Marianne would have taken the horse from Willoughby, and that horse would have had a sad, sad life. He wouldn't have had food, he wouldn't have had shelter, um, he would have been deeply loved <laughs> by Marianne, but he wouldn't have been living his best horse life. Eleanor's ability to step in with logic makes it easier for them to all live comfortably in their lives. But on the flip side, if Eleanor was more comfortable with sharing and expressing her emotions and being able to set boundaries, she could have fended off Lucy still and saved herself quite a bit of emotional turmoil. Do you know what Marianne would have done in this situation with Lucy still? She would not have put up with Lucy still coming in and bragging about the fact that she had stolen her true love. Uh, she probably would have ripped Lucy still's hair out and... I mean, it would have been highly frowned on, but Lucy still would not have bothered Marianne anymore. Eleanor, with all of her logic and emotional restraint, oftentimes doesn't have good emotional trust or boundaries with people, which can create long-term terrible relationships. Eleanor is usually on the side of polite society. She's not probably going to have financial hardships, but she's not going to be living a life that she's necessarily happy with unless she has the ability to set boundaries and express what's going on inside of her. Marianne, on the other hand, is going to passionately seek what makes her happy. The problem that she's going to encounter is that our emotions are not always trustworthy. Our emotions sometimes lie to us and tell us that doing this thing will make us happy, and it doesn't. Marianne openly has the quote that says she would know she was doing something immoral. She would feel it that she was doing something immoral as she's falling in love with a known womanizer. I think in this novel, Jane Austen is arguing that we need both logic and emotion to know what what makes us happy and also to have the courage to pursue what makes us happy. The challenge then is to use both emo emotion and logic to create our own paths to not necessarily find happiness, but travel with happiness, like whatever happiness means and looks like, we need both emotion and logic to get there. And now because we're dealing with two different sides, there are going to be two, two different ways of traveling towards this moderation of emotion and logic. I personally am much more like Eleanor, so I tend to, to approach this subject more like Eleanor would, and I went and found lots of researched articles about how to deal with emotions, and um, so I have a couple tips and tricks for the people who are like Eleanor and the people who are like Marianne. So first, to my fellow Eleanors who bottle up all of their emotions, there's a magazine that has a series called Science-Based Insights for a Mindful Life, and they have an article called How to Regulate Your Emotions Without Suppressing Them, and I will leave that link down below. Um, so they had a quote that I found super interesting that said, emotional suppression, for example, consists of inhibiting the outward signs of your inner feelings. Professionals in high-stress jobs, such as doctors, police, or military, are often taught that emotional suppression is an effective strategy for emotional regulation, in spite of plentiful research suggesting otherwise. Studies have shown that suppressing your emotions actually endangers your health and well-being, both physically and psychologically. Emotional suppression, having a stiff upper, upper lip or sucking it up, might decrease outward expression of emotion, but not the inner emotional experience. In other words, suppressing doesn't make the emotion go away, it just stays inside of you, causing more pain. We see this in Eleanor in quite a few ways. Eleanor doesn't discuss the death of her father, having to leave her child at home, and move somewhere new to a new estate. She doesn't discuss being teased incessantly by her neighbors about boys. Um, she doesn't discuss her marriage prospects and when that marriage prospect is broken up and she's forced to discuss and talk with the girl who um, stands in the way of her marrying the boy she loves. Um, she also deals with her sister's breakup and then subsequent health and happiness um, falling out. Um, this girl deals with a lot of suppression of her emotions. In fact, the first time we really see Eleanor discuss her true and honest feelings is when Marianne accuses her of being a, a statue near the end of the novel. And what's also interesting is that Eleanor's strategy of sucking it all up and holding it all in doesn't change the inner tor turmoil that she's experiencing and feeling. Eleanor may not fall desperately ill in the moment, but studies show that over the course of long term, that suppression of emotions could come back as, say, heart disease or high blood pressure, and she might die an early death because of her um, holding in all of those emotions. Eleanor is not happy with the life she is living, and she doesn't quite know how to be happy um, with that life because she doesn't really understand what it is she's seeking for because she's holding everything in. Now to my dear passionate Marianne's of this world, let's talk about emotions. I first want to make it very clear that I'm not talking about mental illness here. I'm not talking about depression or anxiety or schizophrenia or any of those other hosts of mental illness. I'm talking about the people who let their emotions sometimes run away from them, who feel things and love life and live and laugh very loud and are willing to wear their hearts on their sleeves. Emotions are beautiful, and we definitely need to express them. 
but emotions are not always trustworthy. If you feel stressed and you buy something to deal with that stress and you feel better for a moment, what happens when that thrill wears off? You haven't actually fixed the problem and there's the difference between the emotions driving you and you and you being the one that drives your emotions. Acting purely from emotion often means you miss opportunities for growth. You might not become friends with people and you probably might be subjected to some of the gossip to Um, by those people who are around you. We see this in the novel quite a bit. Marianne is subjected to a lot of gossip um, from the surrounding, from her relatives and also the surrounding neighbors. Marianne desperately loves her sister and she loves um, the boy that her sister is falling in love with, but because they don't feel the same emotion to the extent, same extent that she does, she often feels distant from them and has a hard time relating to them. And also Marianne mistakenly assumes that she can only love someone once, um, which puts a real dent on how happy she thinks she can be. The solution to this conundrum, um, from psychologists and therapists anyway, um, is that we have to fill our emotions in real time. If you are more like Eleanor, in your case, you need to fill them. And in Marianne's case, you need to not feel like you have to act a certain way because you are feeling that emotion. So for Eleanor, you have to name that emotion. You have to track that emotion throughout the day. You have to allow your body to feel that and to acknowledge, I really am upset about this. Eleanor becomes more open and more free and able to have relationships with people once she opens up with Marianne and acknowledges all of the terrible things that she's been feeling and and experiencing. Once Eleanor could talk and accept the narrative that was going on with Edward Ferris, she could create and accept her own experiences. This later allowed her to be more free and open and honest with Edward that allowed her to create an emotional bond with him when he was emotionally ready. Marianne, on the other hand, needed more help expressing her emotions in a healthy way. She sought solitude, which isn't bad. It's often very healthy to be alone and want to be alone with your emotions. But she refused to talk through her problems even though everyone knew she was feeling massive stress. Um, She refused to talk with her mother or her sister about any of her problems and felt that she had to spend the time um, staying up late and staying, and she felt like she had to grieve in a certain way in order to validate that emotion. But she didn't have to act a certain way for that emotion to be validated. Simply the fact that she was feeling those emotions means that it was a valid emotion. Marianne also was really good about turning to creativity to help deal with that emotion, such as playing the piano or reading or going on long walks and imagining things, but her sorrow tended to let her ruminate on those experiences. Again, the article that I referenced earlier said that tragically and ironically, efforts to talk yourself out of your emotion will often result in increased rumination and preservation. In other words, you will keep thinking about and holding on to those emotions you're trying to avoid. Um, And sometimes Marianne did try to avoid the motion, sometimes she tried to feel too much of it, Um, but mostly what it comes down to is that she spent most of the time in the past, and in the present she forgot the happiness of the present moment. The mindfulness that is so central to her character and being able to um, enjoy and feel all of the beautiful leaves at Norland Park and the food and everything got lost when she started to ruminate and focus solely on her broken heart. Another really interesting point that the article made that I thought matched up with Eleanor and Marianne very perfectly says that when it comes to regulating difficult emotions, there are two ways most people respond. They act out or they suppress. If you act out with strong emotions like anger, you will most likely create undesirable consequences in your relationships or work and even your play. The ripple effect of acting out usually provokes more anger around you, which leads to more difficulty. The consequence though of suppressing those big emotions can be even more dangerous. What many people aren't aware of is that there are there is another way to regulate our emotions we feel them in real time on one level emotions are like emo are like energy waves varying in shape and intensity just like ocean waves their nature is to arise and pass away pretty quickly like all natural phenomenon now one thing that i found deeply frustrating about society is that it is all about teaching us how to make money how to know our history how science impacts us it teaches us how to use all of these labor saving devices but we rarely if ever talk about emotional regulation or the ability to know how to handle your emotions and how to handle and feel really strong emotions and what to do with it which seems really odd if you think about it because we as humans are very emotional creatures like why isn't this a skill that's taught in high school if you don't know how to regulate your emotions and you get angry all the time that can prevent you from getting a job or from keeping a job it shouldn't be taboo or not talked about when you need to talk with a therapist to learn how to do emotional regulation skills most of us don't learn these techniques at home 
them. And for those of us who do learn them, it's because we have people who know how to do them who've modeled them for us. For most of us, learning these skills, we have to be wise enough to learn from our own experiences or we need to have it modeled for us somewhere, either in the people in our lives, in movies, or in literature, which I think is why literature is often so compelling for so many people. In a world so intent on ignoring the underpinning its underpinnings of its own emotions, um, books openly talk about how people feel, why they feel that way, and what they do as a result. Not that literature classes make up for a lack of education about emotional management, but at least we do have Marianne and Eleanor to watch and observe and maybe just learn a few lessons about these two on how to change and manage our emotions ourselves and find a way to walk down the middle road between logic and emotion. I think Sense and Sensibility should be considered a classic and I think it should be widely read by people because I think there's real value in looking at yourself and saying, man, how do I tend to handle my own emotions? And is that the best way? Because we don't always stop and think about those sorts of things. And I think having that discussion, even if it's just with yourself, can be really powerful and affect your happiness levels long term. That's all I have to say on this subject. So I'll talk with you down in the comments down below and in another video. Bye!